الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك عظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا سبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده أنجز وعده ونصر عبده وهزم الأحزاب وحده My dear respected brothers and sisters عيد مبارك to all of you Today just I want to reflect upon one uh, verse in Surah Al-Hajj in which Allah سبحانه وتعالى said لكل أمة جعلنا من سكن ليذكر اسم الله عليه ليذكر اسم الله على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام فإلهكم إله واحد فله أسلم وبشر المخبتين And for all religion we have appointed a right of sacrifice that they may mention the name of Allah over what he has provided for them of sacrificial animals for you for your God is one God so to him submit What is the big deal about Animal. Two of the longest seven chapters of Quran, chapter 5 and 7, and Ma'ida and Am, talk about the cattle and animals and what's halal and what's haram. One of these surahs called Surah Al An'am. What is the significance of the biha and halal food that the Quran frequently talk about and it sometimes um, divides us as Muslims based on madhahib and views over what is what constitutes the biha and halal. What, what's the big deal about it? Why uh, this debate is not over vegetables or bread, it's mainly over animals. Um, I promise you I'm not going to address this from fiqh perspective because I believe addressing this from fiqh perspective is more um, uh, very, very narrow-minded and does not give us a complete answer. In Islam, law follows theology and ethics, not the other way around. Everything is stemmed from our faith, our belief, our philosophy, our understanding of this universe, our worldview, which contradicts, we have to be uh, clear about this, with so many other philosophies and worldviews. So um, to answer these questions, uh, we need to have this multidimensional, uh, holistic approach to understand this issue of the biha and animals and sacrifice. And also we need to understand our context and our, uh, the world in which we live. And there's so many philosophies and ideas in uh, regards of animal uh, rights and ethical practice. So uh, it's always important to start from our theology, our faith, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sacrifice is a form of worship in almost all, every religion. In Judaism, as we all know, the Old Testament ordered Bani Israel to sacrifice and still the Korban by the way the name kosher food is called Korban right and the word in Arabic is Korban and Urdu Korbani right the word Korban or Korbani literally means to draw closer to something or someone and of course this applies to all good deeds in Islam any kind of charity any kind of good deed we do it with the intention of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the word qareeb, qurban right and um, the term actually had this technical meaning of the dhabiha or the sacrifice of an animal um, uh, for the sake of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in Christianity actually it took a different meaning as you know um, the concept of sacrifice in Christianity is different from the concept of sacrifice in Judaism uh, it refers mainly to the spiritual sacrifice, directing people to do good deeds as a form of sacrifice, bloodless sacrifice, which brings some sort of criticism to Muslims, which we will talk about um, very soon. So it's not like the Jewish tradition, which is very close, by the way, from the Muslim tradition. So many non-monotheistic religions also, they practice the, co the, the tradition of sacrifice. Even Satan worshippers, African, um, Caribbean um, sects, they, they also have this concept of sacrifice. In fact, some cultures, they have not only animal sacrifice, but human sacrifice, especially in the time of natural disasters, earthquake and tsunamis, 
and, and hurricanes, people believe that they have to sacrifice someone, and usually this someone is young and healthy youth, in order to, um, um, according to their belief, um, to uh, reduce the anger of God. So this concept of sacrifice is, as we mentioned, in every religion, even, even monotheistic religions, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here in this verse, that for all religion, we have appointed a right of sacrifice. And the reason is to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the provider, and um, to appreciate these gifts that's given to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear, prohibited to you are dead animals, blood and flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah, and those which are sacrificed on stone altars. We need to understand that this is not only a fiqh issue. It's an issue of faith. Arabs, idol worshippers, as you all know, they used to sacrifice for their false gods. Not only that, they are showing loyalty by sacrificing animals, and they put their blood, their hands in their blood, and they put this blood on the body of the stones that they worship. At this expression of loyalty and love so it's not only about the purity of the meat it's also the purity of the intention the purity of the intention our understanding is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things he is the only one who creates and he's the only one who has the right and the authority to make laws to tell us what's lawful and what's unlawful right interestingly Al Quran condemned the idol worshippers because they are turning what Allah made halal into haram, not the other way around. Because they said these kind of animals we cannot ride, we cannot milk, we cannot eat. Specific animals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly told them, Who gave you the authority to make these halal and pure and clean things I created for people to make it haram? So making turning halal into haram is as bad as turning haram into halal. And if you read chapter 5 and chapter 6 in the Quran, you will find out that clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them for turning halal things into haram. To Allah belongs the creation and the command. He creates and He tells us what's right and what's wrong. So we gain our ethical values from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never say that this is halal and this is haram out of your own mind. It's Allah who says this is halal and this is haram. So, Al Quran talked about it because it's, 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 it's a ibadah. It's, all, it's a form of ibadah to sacrifice for another God. So, it is unfair, it's unethical to use the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a sacrifice for other gods. That's why Al Quran told us that although these cows and sheep sacrificed for other gods, naturally halal or naturally pure and clean, but it became haram because it is as if you are giving up your loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by eating these kind of animals that slaughtered in the name of other gods. That, that, that's the main reason Al Quran talked so much about this. It's a matter of faith, and loyalty, and love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran always takes us back to our understanding of our relationship with our Lord and Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, not to other gods. We cannot say la ilaha illallah and then go and enjoy and eat animal sacrifice in the name of other gods. It's an insult and hip hypocritic tradition or practice if we do that. That's why Quran emphasized the importance of not eating from these animals upon which the names of other gods have been mentioned. Al-Quran also emphasized the importance of um, um, uh, sharing and giving. So the tradition of sacrifice is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like appeasing him or stopping his anger and, and so on. No, Allah made it very clear that he does not benefit from this meat or blood. It's not the blood and the meat that preaches Allah. Rather, it is the piety, the taqwa in your heart. Allah wants us to be to live moral life, to f care with, uh, uh, with others and share with others. 
So the sacrifice is made in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feed the poor and the needy. That's why it is the prophetic tradition to keep one third and to give gifts to your family, friends, second third and the last third you give it for those who are in need. And also to remember the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam who was willing to sacrifice his own son to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's all about morality, about ethical values. And talking about moral and ethical values, I just very briefly just give some examples of the philosopher's views over whether nature or animals have intrinsic values within them, or it's only humans who have intrinsic values. In other words, can we use environment can we use other animals for food and otherwise Aristotle interestingly um, argued that nature has made for the sake of man intrinsically and the environment along with non-human beings as uh, available for instruments are made for us to use which is very close from the Islamic understanding of the concept of tashkhir sakhara lakum yeah, we have every right to use them, but we have to use env environment and animals wisely and morally. Uh, Immanuel Kant, according to his um, famous ethical theory for responsibility and, and, and duties, he said that it's our obligation to take care of environment and um, um, to use uh, the environment wisely and, and ethically, um, not because they have intrinsic values, but rather he feared that reckless um, uh, contamination of nature might encourage others to develop the character which would be um, uh, insensitive to cruelty. However, we need to also understand that we are living in a time of liberalism and um, human rights and animal rights world. So many philosophers and modern thinkers, they believe, like for example the Australian um, uh, ethical philosopher Peter Singer who argued that uh, species, speciesism is equal to racism. In other words, we, the fact that we are able to use other animals does not give us the right to do that. We have equal rights. We are not superior to other animals. Therefore, humans cannot use other animals. Um, this is a huge movement going on in Europe, in the West in general, that makes or believe that uh, uh, human and animal are equal in rights. They have the same rights. So like racism is bad, unethical, speciesism is also bad. Like, to consider our species superior to our species. And um, I don't know if you are familiar with this concept of dog stranger question. For 30 years, high school, senior high school students and adults also are being asked, if you get the chance to save a stranger or your dog, which one will you do? This is the irony here, we're talking about human rights, and now we're reducing human to animal. This is not to say we should be cruel to animals, Islam respect animals, but to reduce the value of human into a value of an animal, that's not what Allah says, that we have honored the children of Adam. Two thirds actually voted against the human. One third said, definitely my dog. The other third said that we don't know, we're not sure. And many adults will give the same answer. So, so, and actually it is a big debate now over whether it is right or wrong, ethical or unethical, to use animals for, uh, to experiment new medicine, to see whether it, it can cure cancer or AIDS or um, Alzheimer. Using animals as experiment is not good, it's unethical. Even if this will save life, hundreds of human lives. Another debate about um, uh, whether to use pig's heart um, as a replacement for, for human. Can, no, no, cannot do that. And of course, we cannot eat animals. I don't know if you have seen this uh, slogan of the people for the ethical treatment of animals campaign, that they have these posters. On this poster, there's a big um, title that says, Holocaust on your plate. And in this poster, you see a picture of, of a Jewish uh, person being uh, tortured um, under the Nazis, right? Um, and next to it, a sheep or a chicken, and they are trying to convince people that when you eat animals, then you are performing uh, or being involved in a Holocaust. 
again, is these innocent, <coughs> innocent animals. Uh, again, uh, we, we, I don't have to talk so much about animal rights in Islam, but just very briefly, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever kills a spur or anything bigger than that, without a just cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold him accountable on the day of judgment. Killing for pleasure is not allowed in Islam. Even when we kill animals, we have to do this in the way the Prophet ﷺ prescribed. You have um, to, you cannot torture animals in the time of sacrifice. And when he was asked, sallallahu alayhi wa uh, whether we will be rewarded if we um, do an act of charity to animals, the Prophet sallam replied, yes, there is a reward for acts of charity to every beast alive. You have to be kind and nice to animals, but not to the point of making humans and animals uh, equal. And of course, uh, we have to mention this context that so many killing of humans in India the, for tho by those who are worshiping cows and consider cows to be so holy and it's okay to kill people, uh, mainly Muslims um, um, because the life of the cow is more significant and important than the life of humans which shows a lot of ethical contradiction in this approach. In the last two years Almost 20 people have been killed, and some of them were lynched because they are practicing their religious um, uh, freedom in a democratic, supposedly democratic country. So we're living in this kind of world that um, elevates the, the, sta the, the, the state of animals at the expense of, the, of, of human need. So sacrifice or qurbani or the biha is important in Islam because, again, it is related to our faith and belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to do this ethically and nicely. We have the right to use the environment and to use other animals without torturing them. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these animals for us to enjoy. And this Eid, like many other Eids that were prescribed for the nations before us, has been made, according to this ayah, mainly for us to remember that we should be always thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who subjected and created these animals for us to use and to enjoy. It is our right, given to us by the one who created us and the one who created animals. Who said clearly in the Quran, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْهُ He subjected everything in this universe, all these solar system and galaxies and, and, and whatever we enjoy here on this earth has been made for us. Everything has been made for us. Actually, the solar eclipse that took place a few days ago, it's also a reminder for us that we humans are living on this tiny place that we call planet Earth. Everything, all this huge system of day and night and movement of the sun and the moon has been made for our own benefit. For our own benefit. We are so significant in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And create all these things for us to use. And that's why he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminds us what's prohibited when it comes to food? Very minimal, very few, comparing to what's allowed. Right? Eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, eat and enjoy the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but just be thankful. Right? He all wants you to be thankful. حرمت عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير وما أهل لغير الله به والمنخنقة والموقوذة والمتردية والنطيحة All these things have been made prohibited for you simply because they are harmful and interestingly this ayah which I think the third ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah chapter 5 in the same ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said today I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Al-Islam as for you as your religion. It's a reminder, everything is well connected. Law, do's and don'ts, with ethics, and with faith. So we have to actually look at this, the Bihan Qurbani from a broader perspective, and this may help us understand why, not only what, why Al-Islam um, took this uh, position. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our sacrifice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to 
um, uh, make this Eid a happy Eid for all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our community and our families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our dua and our good deeds. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum astaghfiruh. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حمد مجيد عباد الله تقوا الله وأطيعوه فير الله سبحانه وتعالى as he should be feared and Watch your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, um, we all know friends who are uh, in Hajj now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their Hajj and their du'as and their prayers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and bring them back safely to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable those who did not perform Hajj yet to do so as early as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers and our du'as. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our families. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. Allahumma inna nas'aluka rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutaqabbala. Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina. Wa aslih lana dunyana alladhi fiha ma'ashuna. Wa aslih lana akhiratana alladhi ilayha ma'aduna. Allahumma aj'al hayata ziyadatan lana fi kulli khayr. Wa aj'al mawta rahatan lana min kulli sharr. Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghif. Faaslih lana shaknana kullah. Wa la takinna ila anfusina tarfata ayn. Wa la ila ahadi min al-nas ya rabbil alameen. Allahum mansur islam wa izzah muslimin. Allahum mansur dinaka wa kitabaka wa ibadaka al-salihin. Allahum mansur man nasara dinaka wa ja'alna minhum. Wa akhzul man khadala dinaka wa la taj'alna minhum ya rabbal alameen. Allahum ashfina wa ashfina wa ashfina wa marda al-muslimin. Wa arham mawtana wa mawta al-muslimin. Wa ansur islam wa izzah muslimin. اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لآبائنا وأمهاتنا وارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا يا رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث وأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين صل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عيد مبارك to all of you إن شاء الله we'll have our صلاة الجمعة prayer on time at 1:45 and the second one at 3:30 جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Yeah, I mean.